Welcome to Module 2 of Infernia's training sessions. Let's start with the wall tool. When you click on the drop down next to wall, you can see the various type of walls that you can create. Straight wall, curved wall or room divider. Let's check the straight wall features. So when you select straight wall, the different options come up here about what sort of wall you want to create. To draw a wall, click on your workspace for the starting line of your wall and type the required length of the wall and press enter. So next, specify the angle. I am taking a perpendicular wall. Click again on the perpendicular line and your wall will be created. Create the other three walls as well in a similar manner. You will see snapping references as colored lines for ease of drafting as well. You can also specify the thickness of the walls that you want to create. Here you have the thickness source and you have an option of inputting a custom value or choosing from the composite which is 150 or 230 or 100 mm right. So in custom suppose if you select let's say 350 mm. So any wall that you create will now become 350 mm. Similarly, you can also set the height of the wall that you are creating. Let's say I am inputting 3000 mm. So when I am creating the wall, now the wall will be of 3000 mm height. Let's check this in 3D once. As you can see, the last wall that I have created is slightly higher, which means it's 3000 mm and everything else was the default of 2700. Again, when you select any particular wall, let's say I am selecting this wall, the features of the wall appear on the left hand side here. The first thing is the layer. By default, all walls that you create will go into the wall layer. However, if you want to change the layer because of any reason, you can definitely make the changes here. Then secondly, if I want to shift this particular wall by um, let's say 300 mm, then I can shift it by 300 mm as well. I click here and it shifts by 300 mm on the right side. If I want to shift it down, then again I can input the value and it shifts down. After drawing the wall also, you can control the height, which is currently 2700. So if I want to make this 3000, then I can input the value and the height will increase to 3000 mm. Then you can also change the length of a wall and you can see the demarcation A and B here, right? So if you select change at A, that means that on the side of A, the length will change. Suppose right now it's 3175 and I want to make it 4000. So it will increase on the side of A. Similarly, if I select B and make this, let's say 6000, then it will increase in the side of B. In cases when you have a single room but it is divided in terms of functionality, for example, for living and dinings that are usually designed in apartments, you can use a room divider option. Simply select the room divider option under walls tool here and mark the line of division. As you can see, there are now two rooms identified. So under modes, you can see location line. A location line basically indicates, suppose if you are drawing a wall, the blue line that appears is the location line. When you select the center which is set right now, it means that the wall will be created on either sides of the location line and the location line will be in the center. Since a wall is a element which has a thickness to be considered, this is an important feature that you need to check. Once you have made the first wall, you can see that the location line here is on the right side. However, when I am making the next wall, the location line will still be on the right and if I input 3000 here, then the inner to inner dimension of the room would not be 3000. So 
when you want to change the location line swiftly while designing you can use the space bar and the location line will change accordingly as you can see it's now on the left and if i input 3000 now then the dimension will be correct so now when you check the inside to inside of the room is 3000 cross 3000 when all the four walls are made this area will be recognized as a room and you will see a room tag automatically. Whenever the software detects an enclosed space, it is marked as a room. This is important as a lot of features like furniture, ceiling, etc. work on the basis of this tagging. Once the room is identified and the room tag is attached to it, you can go to the select room option and in the drop down underneath, you will get the room one that has been detected. Select the settings button next to it and the room settings option will open up in the design panel. Herein, in the room settings, you can name the room whatever required. Suppose I am naming it as kitchen and in the room type, you have to select exactly which room type it is. In my case, it will be kitchen. Now let's select the room view of the kitchen. It is important to tag the room correctly in the room time since when you go into tools like furnish, you'll be able to see the relevant furnitures only and this helps you in designing quickly. Under the room settings option, you also have a labeling settings wherein you can set the nomenclature of how you want the room tag to appear. You can make changes to the font size, type, color, etc. Also, another important thing is that you can specify underneath what is the area of that particular room if i click on show on next to area the area of this particular room will be shown here you can specify in which format you want this to be demarcated whether you want the width into height or you want to show the area covered or you want to show both options let me select both for reference and you can see how it is shown here now let's check the door tool so when you click on the door tool you can see that a door indicator appears on all, any of your wall areas so you can install it in any of the wall areas that you require so let's say i'm installing it here you just need to click on that space and the door will appear here then select the door again to make the required changes in the dimensions and height of the door when you click on the door, you can see that there is a wall option in case you want to make changes in the wall that is there or you want to make changes in the door that is there. So I am selecting door. In this, you can see the width of the door is 800. Let's say you want to make a change. It's a main door and you want to have it as 1050. So you can do that. Then even the thickness of the door can be customized. Suppose in bathrooms and all, if you want a slightly less thicker door then you can definitely make it lesser then the height of the door currently if you look at it let's check this so this is the door right so if i want to increase or decrease the height of the door then let's say i want to make it 2400 so when you do that the height of the door gets increased let's say you want to increase the elevation of the door so you can select the value of, let's say I want to make a 100 mm elevation so the door gets elevated by 100 mm leaving a 100 mm space here in case when you need a step then you can definitely do that there's also an option to select from where you want to input the value whether you want to input the value from floor bottom floor top or base top so according to that you can make a selection now Let's check the floor plan here again. Just like how we had checked the wall option, right? You can see a input of 1 and 2 here. So, this is for the shift direction. If I select direction 1, meaning this direction, then if I input 450 mm, then it will shift towards the direction of 1. Then if I select 2, and I input a value of let's say 200 mm 
it will shift to the direction of 2 then we can also change the hinge in the side of the door let's say I want to flip the hinge right now it's opening in this direction if I click on flip hinge it will open in the other direction right where the hinge is located so I can flip it then I can also flip the side right now it's opening inside the door inside the room so if I select on flip side then it will open outside then comes the change model Let's check the 3d once more if you want to change the model of the door you can select on change model and you can select from the options here as to what sort of door you want to input let's say I am selecting door 13 so the door design gets changed similarly if you want to have a double door or you want to have a shutter or you want to have a gate anything that you need there are a lot of these pre-made designs already for you to select from these are the features of a door the window tool also acts in the exact same manner click on the window option here and you can install the window by clicking on the wall when you select the window again all the details appear in a very similar manner in the design panel the one difference in window that you need to check is the elevation while in the case of door it is not a very essential detail in case of window the elevation becomes very important as it will specify the location the exact location of the window when you check this in 3d you can see that the elevation is 800 from here if you want to make the change and make it 1000 then you can do the same as per your requirement you can make any change required in the dimensions height and elevation as well to add pillars or columns in your design select the architectural tab and therein select the pillar tool you'll be able to see a demarcation of the pillar profile in your modeling space and using the snapping tool you can place it wherever required click on the area where you want to place the pillar and the pillar will be installed there similarly you can add pillars to the rest of the room as well when you select the pillar that you have installed the details of the pillar opens up in the design panel by default the layer is set as pillars you can also make changes to the profile of the pillar by selecting edit profile by default the pillar which is installed have a dimension of 400 cross 400 over which you can make any changes that are required to make changes select the edge that you want to extend and you'll be able to see options of changing the length or shifting the edge completely when you change when you select change length you have to select on which side you want the length to be changed suppose i want the length to be changed at b so i will be selecting b and i can input the revised length that i want which is 500 i'll also make a similar change on the other edge and change the length in the direction of a so now the dimension is changed to 400 cross 500 you can also move the entire edge by shifting the edge if I want to shift it to right so that the entire profile becomes 500 by 500 then I can shift it right by 100 mm as you can see now the profile is changed to 500 cross 500 click on apply and the changes that you have made will be reflected in the column selected you can also make changes to the height of the pillar as per your requirement currently it's at 2700 and I can make it 3000 by inputting the value here and the height of the pillar will increase under the architecture tool you have the option to add beams as well select the beam option and similar to the pillar option it will also align itself using the snap tool and click on where you want to place it then select the beam again here in the layer will be selected as beam 
and you can make the changes to the dimension as required mm -hmm. by inputting the value here or you can make the extension using the extension tool over the beam. So I'm extending it till the next column. When you check this in 3D, the beam is installed correctly with the elevation of 2400 from the floor base top. You can make any changes to the dimension if required. If you want the elevation to be reduced, let's say 300 mm, then 2100, revise the value here and the elevation of the beam will change. If you want to increase or decrease the height, let's say I want to make it 600 mm, then the height of the beam will increase. You also have the option to make any dimensional change in terms of width and depth. If I want to make the depth 300, I simply have to input the value and click outside. And as you can see, the depth of the beam has been changed. Select the tool and the ceiling sketcher window will open up. You can select the pick tool and click on any enclosed room. The enclosure will get highlighted in blue. Alternatively, you can also make the ceiling using the drafting tools here. Then click apply. Now your ceiling is created. Let's check this in 3D view. Let's check how to create tiling. When you select the add tiling option, the tiling sketcher mode will open up. Here it, just like how we selected the floor ceiling area, you can select the tiling area as well or sketch it using the, any of the drafting tools. Here, I'll just select the pick tool and I will be selecting room one year again and I'll click apply. Then you can go to the 3D mode and as you can see, the tile has been added with the default settings that we have. Here, you can select the tile again. In this, you'll get the different options that you can make changes on. Let's say you can you want to make the uh, depth of the tile a little higher. So you can make it 15 mm and tiling pattern. So here, if you want to create a rotation of the pattern that you have, let's say I want to make a 45 degree rotation, then I can select that. You can also change the pattern. We have pre-designed options here for you to choose from. Let's say I am taking a checkered pattern here. So this is how it will show up. You can also change the size of the tiles that you are using. I want to uh, take 450 mm, let's say. So, and you can change it and create. click on set. It gets changed. Thank you for watching.